All right, guys, today I get to talk to Alexander Watkins. This is the person that has named some of the craziest brand names that you can think of. I mean, all the way from the Wendy's Baconator to all these different awesome names. We're going to be talking about how you come up with your name, how important is a name, can you ever switch, all these different types of things. Alexandra, thank you for so much for coming on the show. Let's talk about it. A lot of our audience is real estate agents, investors, small businesses that – it's very hard for them to come up with names. So let's start with the importance. How important is it to have uh, an amazing brand name? Okay, wait, Matt. First of all, I have to tell everybody this. I've been on 76 podcasts. You have the best podcaster voice out of any podcast I've ever been on. So oh, like, thank you. Wow, I'm really impressed. Like, I'm, I can't even concentrate because you're you're so good. Like, I, I just want, I want you to record my voicemail and just follow me around and talk to people for me. So yeah. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so the importance of a business name. Uh, yeah. You, you want a name that's, you need a brand. You want people to recognize your brand. You want a name that's easy for people to remember, to spell, to pronounce. And it's important that you be known by a brand name as opposed to just your own name. If you, you know, if you have a company and if you're a real estate agent, for instance, and you work for a, a brokerage and you can't come, you, don't, you can't really have a company name because you already work for a company. Um, you can have a moniker and we do a lot of those. I just did one for a real estate agent who is a former flight attendant. And she's very blonde and bubbly and self-deprecating. So her moniker is the flighty real the flighty realtor. And so her tagline is something about helping you soar, something like that. Uh, so yeah, it's it's fun. And you know, people when people see a name like the flighty the flighty realtor, you know, it just makes them smile. And it's so important because it helps. When somebody smiles, it, that means it's, you know, they get it, it's registering with them, and it's going to help them remember you later and probably talk about you too. 100%. What did it take you to be able to go ahead and be in those positions where you got the opportunity to name some of these, you know, from like Wendy's all the way to Google and Twitter, Coca-Cola, et cetera? How did you get in those rooms? Well, so with... Wendy's, for instance, it was when I was first, so just a little history on me. I was an advertising copywriter for a very long time. And every once in a while, I would get thrown a bone and get to name something. And I was really good at it. So I eventually realized that naming was a profession. So I switched gears and got out of advertising and got into branding. So how I made a name for myself, pardon the pun, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I started freelancing for all of these big branding firms and naming firms. And one of them, Strategic Name Development, they use me, they would give me a lot of assignments. And one was to come up with a name for a new bacon cheeseburger from Wendy's. So that's how that happened. Um, they took credit for it for years and years and years. And I think they're all retired now. So now I can say that I named it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Baconator has its own Wikipedia page. Um, it, you know, there's Son of Baconator, Baconator fries, there's Pringles, Baconator flavor. Yeah, it's it's taken on, somebody sent me a license plate the other day, a picture of someone on Baconator on their license plate. But what's really funny is most people have heard of it, right? So I met this guy the other day down the street and he had a beautiful Porsche parked in his garage. And so I asked him, and I, I have one too, but not as nice as his. And I said, how did you become so successful? And he said, you know, work, let's, you know. And he said, how did you become successful? And I said, I named the Baconator. And he, he clearly had never heard of it. And he said, the Bacon Hater? And oh. <laughs> like, okay, thank God that wasn't like something that happened in a focus group. Cause you could totally see that killing the name, right? Totally. So, well, it sounds like the bacon hater, and I don't hate bacon. I love it. So can you? This is why we don't believe in testing names because um, they can be killed just for some stupid reason like that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so, for you, how much of it is naming an art, and how much of it is a science? A hundred percent art, zero science. There's no science. And anyone that tells you it's a science is not a creative person. Like they use science. Like seriously, like. 
what you're just going to plug it into a, I don't even know what that means, but no, everything we do is creative. And that's because I was a copywriter, right? So writing ads all day long, I was coming up with concepts that made an emotional connection with people. Science does not make emotional connections. Art does, right? You see a picture, you know, a painting and you love it and you want to buy it. And that you love it and it's making that emotional connection. That's what our names do. You know, a name for like a frozen yogurt store or franchise that we named Spoon Me or the Church of Cupcakes or a GPS for dogs that we named Retriever. Like those names are based, those are, it was an art to create those names where science wouldn't come up with those names and chat GPT is not coming up with names like that. Absolutely. Like I've used ChatGPT for names and while it can, you can have endless ideas, none of them really seem to work. So like, what is the process for you to come up with a name? Well, we have a creator brief that we have people fill out. So that would have, you know, we would learn about your, you know, all about your brand, your target audience, any desired brand experiences you want people to feel when they see or hear your name for the first time. Uh, the personality of your name, is it playful? Is it, do you want it to be approachable? I mean, all of our names are approachable, but you know, do you want something that's more serious? So we're getting that information. We ask you to, you know, use your name in a, in a, in a sentence. So we kind of use that as the acid test sentence. And then anything else we should know, do you want to monetize your name with merchandise? A lot of our clients do. And like with the frozen yogurt franchise, we named Spoon Me. They wanted a name that they could put on t-shirts and merchandise and sell. So when we were reviewing all of our finalists and we had quite a few, Spoon Me was the name that we picked because we thought that's a name people would want on a t-shirt. And they did. They shut up and Spoon Me was their best-selling t-shirt. They had bumper stickers that said, if you're driving this close, you might as well Spoon Me. So yeah, those are some of the things we look for. But yeah, just getting that brief filled out is our starting point. Then we go, our team will brainstorm a bunch of names, you know, share our lists back and forth, come up with more, and then present the client with, uh, how, depending on which package they choose, um, however many names that they get. And then if there's a second round, we'll do that. Um, oftentimes there's some trademark screening involved. Yeah, and then we just help people rank their finalists. And it, it always comes down to not, can you, can you, get me a name that I like, it's, it's, which of these is going to, which of the, I like five, you know, five that have clear trademarking, help me figure out which one is the best name. How many names on an assignment do you typically come up with? Well, it depends. So right now <laughs> we're, we're, we're doing this assignment for some former Navy SEALs that have a defense company and they're naming um, autonomous surface vessels. And they, they wanted super kind of straightforward names for some of them. So we were, we were, they, we actually used ChatGPT for a lot of these because they wanted to know like names of US senators that are pro-defense that are no longer living. Like that's just something you can put into ChatGPT. So that list, ended up being like 900 names because they gave us a whole bunch of directions to explore. But normally we do, and we do not do that many names at all. Um, between the teams, like let's say the team comes up with 300 and then I'll narrow it down to a hundred. You know, I'm knocking stuff off or it just depends, it depends. But yeah, we try to present, we only present names that are intuitive to spell, pronounce and understand. There's no gobbledygook, there's no, uh, you know, you're not going to get a word spelled backwards or, you know, missing vowels. We, we don't do those kind of names. We're, we're all about names that, you know, like the ones I mentioned, like Retriever. Like when you hear it, you get it. Um, yeah. And then we worry about domain names later. Then we'll find you a domain name. Yeah. So like Krispy Kreme, as an example, is easy to pronounce, misspelled. So like, tell me like how you would evaluate that brand. Well, I think the spelling is ridiculous. Like, I, I it's funny. I did a I did a workshop yesterday, and the example I gave of a bad name was I spelled uh, craft creative crafting, but I spelled it with K's, and I spelled creative like 
K R A, like n numeral A T Y B, yeah. which is like, and I always say, just because it's creative doesn't mean it's a good, good name. You're right. The 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 K is it's childish, and it it's look it, look Krispy Kreme is already a famous brand. You know they weren't famous overnight, but. When you're starting out with a blank slate, don't give yourself any disadvantages. And look, spell check, which didn't exist at the time Christy, Krispy Kreme was formed, we now have spell check. It's going to get flagged constantly. So you want a name that's going to, like the name of my firm is Eat My Words. Eat My Words never gets flagged. It's just, you know, they're whole words. Uh, and so that's what we try to do is like retriever, right? Or spoon me the church of cupcakes they're all spelled exactly like they sound and um people understand them when they see them so that's what we're looking for but you no know, Krispy Kreme I mean I love the alliteration it's a fun name I don't well actually thinking about it I don't really get the crispy what part of a donut is crispy right it's not yeah yeah I never really thought of that but I one year one year uh when I lived in San Francisco um, you, Krispy Kreme didn't have a Krispy Kreme in the city. So we, I sent my assistant to Daly City to go pick up on Valentine's Day, heart-shaped Krispy Kreme donuts, boxes of them. And then we deliver them to all of our clients as a gift, which is like a really nice thing to do. Cause it was kind of a cult thing in San Francisco because you had to leave the city. You had to exit the 49 square miles to get, to get your donuts. Yeah, that makes sense. So, all right. So we understand easy to work, easy to spell words. Obviously that has a visual image, it has an emotional appeal. What are some of the mistakes that people are making? Okay. Spelling challenge, like we talked about. Um, if your name is a copycat, if your name is, so copycat, for instance, uh, when we were doing the frozen yogurt name, Pink Berry is a really successful frozen yogurt place. And the client said, we don't want a name with berry, a berry berry or a fruit. I'm like, we wouldn't do that. But I started collecting names of frozen yogurt stores with berry, just with berry in the name. There's cool berry, bliss berry, yum berry, yo berry. I mean, the list goes on. I have a whole slide of all these names. And so don't be a copycat, right? You, you risk trademark infringement and, you know, why be somebody else when you can be yourself? So another one is tame. You don't want a name that's really flat and descriptive. You can't afford to be a wallflower. You need to stand out. And especially now, I mean, there's so much noise out there, right? All the social media, everything. You need a name that's going to jump off the page. Um, another thing is uh, if you have the curse of knowledge, and that's where you have a name that you know what it means, but you kind of forget that other people don't know what it means. This is often if the name is in a foreign language, right? You mean something in Swahili. Like, you know that. But guess what? You're not going to be there to explain it to people. So d d don't do that. Or if your name is spelled backwards, uh, X-O-B-N-I. And when people see that name, they don't know it's inbox spelled backwards. So that's a terrible name. Um, yeah, so those are some of the things. Um, oh, another thing is restrictive. And that's where you get boxed in to a name and then you out you outgrow it. So example, you might know the retail store Bath Signs and they, you know, they started out as a sign store, but now they do all these other things and their tagline is more than fast, more than signs. But that's a waste of a tagline. Just change the name like Burlington Coat Factory. We're more than just coats. That was their tagline. Like, okay, <laughs> Canadian Tire. They're up in Canada, obviously. Um, Canadian Tire, they sell way more than tires. They, it's it's kind of like a Home Depot meets Target. They, they sell all kinds of things. But in the 80s, their tagline was, you know, we sell more than tires. Like, change the name already. You know, and like, yes, everyone in Canada by this time knows they sell more than tires. But what if Canadian Tire wanted to roll into the U.S.? So, you know, you, you're driving down the street and you see Canadian Tire. You're not going to know they sell all that other stuff. So, yeah, and it's never too late to change your name. We recently renamed a bank that's more than 100 years, that was more than 100 years old. So, yeah, it's change, change your name. It's easy to change your name because you can do a website redirect. You have your customers' emails. 
you have um, social media, you have, you, 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 there's so many ways to communicate with your customers now. So it's, it's never too late. So a lot of like agents, investors, they're, you know, one man bands, they're very small companies. Uh, so they have a hard time differentiating. Should they brand themselves? Should they brand the business? What's your take on, on creating a name in your own name versus a brand name? That's a great question, Matt. Do not use your own name. And here's why. I mean, just for, and your investors look at this. When you sell your company, if you don't want to be attached to it, you don't want your name attached to it. So give it a brand name and then sell it, right? It, it just will be more valuable that way. And it won't have any expectations. I mean, here's an example. When I was a freelance copywriter, I was just using my personal name, Alexandra Watkins, but it didn't say anything about me. Um, where Eat My Words, it's suggestive of, you know, we started out naming things that made people fat and drunk. So that's where that name came from. And it just, it just still works for us. And in fact, like, hey, I, I want to make sure that the name isn't restrictive. And it's not, we get hired. I mean, you get hired by all kinds of companies. So you want a name that's, that says something about what your brand is or does. It's suggestive. And your own personal name will not do that. One example that I love is a, a publicist came to us, a very fiery woman named Lynette Hoy, but you would not know she was a publicist by her name. So we rebranded her Fire Talker PR with the tagline, hot on the press. She has packages like controlled burn and fire starter. She calls herself the fire chief. She works in the firehouse. So uh, she has a theme song, Fire, by the Ohio Players that she cranks up before any, any webinar presentation that she does to get the audience pumped, right? So that's what you can do when you have a brand name, where if she was just Lynette Hoy, none of that, you know, someone sees your title as Fire Chief, they're, they're going to love that, right? So you can have, like, I call myself the Big Cheese a lot. So you can just have fun with, you know, you can have fun in, even if you're an investor, you know, which isn't traditionally a fun business. Like people want to work with people they like. And like one of my, we've done a lot in financial services and one name that I never got, it, it, this, this is the one, everyone has an, like a, a story that just killed them, right? Like something at work. This is the story that killed me. A company came to us and said, we're launching a peer-to-peer -peer lending service where people can borrow money and lend money. And we're launching it on Facebook. And this is before I even knew what Facebook was. This is years ago. So the name we came up with was bankroll, right? Because it works both ways. You're either getting bankrolled, somebody's lending you money, or you're bankrolling someone. It was fun. It was perfect for the younger crowd that was on Facebook at the time. And the client said, no, we can't have that name because we're not a bank. And I'm like, okay, when in the history of the world has anyone ever uttered the word bankroll inside of a bank? Never. <laughs> you don't go into a loan officer and say, hey, can you bankroll me? You, ju you just don't. A, a loan officer isn't going to say, yeah, we're going to bankroll you. I mean, it's just, it was slang and it just killed me. So that company ended up becoming Lending Club and they came up with the name. Lending Club to me was a ripoff of Lending Tree. Every time I drive by it on the 101 freeway to me and see their building, of course, it just slayed me. But Lending Club, it sounds like a, it looked like a place to go. I'm going to go to this club. But it, nobody wants, people don't want to join one more club where Bankroll would have been the perfect name. It worked both ways. And now somebody, of course, has, has taken that name and is using it in financial services. But yeah. And I always thought, oh, that would be a great name for a venture capital firm. But those, a lot of those guys are all about ego. And as I know from working with them, and they've told me that. So, yeah, they didn't want a fun name. They just wanted to name their, their, you know, their VC firm after themselves. That makes total sense. What about these names where it's like, you know, Kleenex and all these things? You know, does that kind of fall in the same, like, it's not spelled properly? Like these, these made up words, is it too much just implied, like, like hidden meaning? That type of stuff? I don't know Kleenex has a meaning. I know Kodak doesn't. Look, these are names that people people come to us and they're like, oh, I like a name like Kodak. Like, that that's an old, old school name. Like, they're thinking of names from, like, before the internet. So, yeah, Kleenex tissues, they've obviously built a brand. Yeah, I don't know anything about the name. It just, Kleenex, like, I, 
the way I judge a name is, could I present that to a client and feel good taking their money? Like Kleenex, no. Like, what am I going to, Kodak, no. Um, but we also don't work with companies that want an arbitrary name that's, that's seemingly meaningless. Those, look, they're easier to get trademarked, but, and it's, they're kind of lazy names. If they just are, like, like, give someone, like, we like a challenge, you know, like, um, give us something hard and we will come up with the name. And we're not going to give you a contrived word that doesn't mean anything. If you're going to make up a word, do it like the Baconator, where here's the Baconator meets the trifecta, right? It sounds like a dictionary word, like something like, oh, oh, that sounds like a real word. Or here's another one, Optima. That sounds like a real word. Expedia. That sounds like a real word, but they're made up. You know, so people, when they hear it, they know how to spell it. And when they see it, they know they it's evocative of something. So that that's a, that's the test. And most co coined invented words don't pass the test. So like how do you balance the domain name, the trademarks, the the branding like obviously it sounds like name comes first, but how how do you balance those in the in the process of choosing a name? Yeah, name does come first and most people start by looking for a domain name. Don't start there. End there. Um, so first we come up with a name, then we do the trademark screening and based on your trademark screening results, then we'll kind of rank like, okay, which are the, you know, which, which are the cleanest trademark wise? Cause that's what we always recommend. Don't, you know, try to avoid any getting any letters from the USPTO. Although most people get one about something, but you know, you have a good trademark attorney. You can, you can get around that, but, uh, while trademarks, so we do the trademark screening and then people go and do the deeper trademark search. But, you know, while they're doing trademark screening, like if they've narrowed it down to a short list, you know, once we get the results, then we'll start looking for domain names. And we, if we can't get a straight domain, a lot of our clients can afford just to buy a domain name, you know, if we're working with a big client. But if we're working with a smaller client or, you know, look, even Tesla, Tesla didn't have Tesla for the first, Tesla.com for the first 13 years they were in business. They were at Tesla Motors. Facebook was the Facebook until 2005. Basecamp was Basecamp HQ. They, they had, you know, over easily over a million, an, an installed base of over a million. They were Basecamp HQ. Um, Dropbox, same thing, huge installed base. They were getdropbox.com. So people start that way. So add a modif we would add a modifier word. And if one day you want to purchase your domain name, you might be able to, but it's not necessary. Nobody expects you to have an exact match domain name. And then Love it. I I'll show you, Matt, let me just tell you really quick, a way around that. We have a lot of workarounds. One in real estate agents, this is perfect for it. So uh, like in San Diego, like let's say you, you wanted to get a domain for, well, even if you, you work for, uh, you know, you work for Remax, so you can't have a company name. Uh, you know, you could be SusieSellSanDiego.com or, you know, Coastal, yeah, like Coastal, Coastal by Curtis, and, you know, Curtis does Coastal, and, you know, something, whatever your real estate specialty is, that's something you can do. So I, I've never seen more uh, people use domain names like that than in the real estate agents business. There, there's a lot of them and I love that. Um, but another thing you can do is just come up with a, a phrase. So, um, you know, one of my favorites is, uh, I love peanut butter and there's a company called peanut butter and co and their domain name is I love peanut butter.com. Uh, one, I love domain names that make emotional connections. There's a luxury property in San Francisco condos called Lumina and they couldn't get Lumina.com. So their domain name is life at Lumina.com. Another that I absolutely love is, and this is where you're really daring, where you don't even have anything about your name in the, in the tagline or in, in your domain. So this is a smoked turkey company. They're called Greenberg Smoked Turkeys. You know, not a great name. It's a family name. But their domain name is unforgettable, and it's gobblegobble.com. 
That's perfect. And so your domain name can be very different, it sounds like, than your brand name. Yeah, like, well, yeah, like one that I love, we named this popcorn store Pop Psychology, and we couldn't get that. Isn't that a cute name, Pop Psychology? Like the the um, the sweet and salty version was called Bipolar, and then the, the tin that had like the different flavors was Multiple Personality Disorder. We had Munchausen Syndrome. Um, everything came in shrink wrap, you know, so like a lot of fun with that theme. That's called legs. If you have a name with legs, you're golden. But um, we couldn't get pop psychology, so we used their tagline as their domain name, which was crazy for popcorn. So when you have a domain name like that, it just it just it just gives you one more brand asset to help promote your brand. Yeah, and another probably much less common way of getting a domain that's much more available. That yeah. makes a lot of sense. Where do you see yourself and your business going in the next 12 to 18 months? Oh God, I'm so glad you can say 12 to 18 years because I'm going to be really old. <laughs> 12 to 18 months. Well, right now, right now I am refining our services. Um, I just launched this new service called Fun Size that uh where it's it's kind of a you know budget friendly service and it, for people with revenue of under a million dollars where they get a fun size serving of names but they have to want a, a fun or cool name for whatever i'm naming otherwise it's not fun for me it's got to be fun for yeah. me if i'm doing it for a lot less and then focusing more on consumer package goods we have a lot of those clients and yeah that's that's kind of the new focus my online course is done and up and you know that's a really great way for people to learn more my book you know the second edition is out i don't know if i'll be writing a third edition but maybe in 18 months i'll i'll embark on that amazing alexander thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing with us about these names i know i have constant decisions to make on these types of things and like it's so good to have this insight and wisdom uh while we make decisions for those of you out there listening write down something you learned from today's show share it with somebody you know this so they can hold you accountable because freedom is acquired one action at a time and if you take steps day by day before you know it you too will be living a life of freedom thank you guys for tuning in we'll catch you on the next episode